Hey guys, welcome back to the music books and antiques and all kinds, all kinds of whatnots here this week. Um, hope y'all are doing good out there in the YouTube lands and wherever you might be localed. Localed, is that a word? Well, anyway, uh, before we get to the records, um, check out this uh, straw dispenser I picked up. Um, it's not an antique at all. You can still get these at Walmart. I got this one, um, I think it was, uh, how much was this? Eight bucks or something like that? Eleven bucks, eleven dollars? I can't remember. But anyway, um, they used to have these sort of things in, like, malt shops, uh, diners. And sometimes they're, uh, this is almost exactly the same thing you would see in a barber shop. Except they would have uh, this filled with like a blue sort of sanitizing liquid for their combs and whatnot in a barber shop. And I just got that for some straws. Um, for your um, whatever tasty beverage you might be enjoying this evening. Um, but I, I, the reason I'm showing that is because uh, I kind of have my little area back here with that little mini uh, table jukebox you see back there. I've got an old napkin dispenser. And in back of those things is a glass uh, cup dispenser. Because I wanted to have my own little like miniature diner area in my kitchen. Um, but I've got all that stuff just because... Um, when I was a kid back in the 70s, um, there used to be a, a drive-in diner like two blocks from us. And that diner was called Collins Drive-In. <laughs> it wasn't my drive-in. It just uh, coincidentally, it was called Collins Drive-In in Topeka. And um, this was in the uh, somewhere... I would say in the 70s. This place probably opened sometime in the early 50s or late 40s. And it lasted all the way through the 70s at least I remember. Um, but my grandma used to take me to this diner. It didn't look exactly like this. But it was still there. It was all enclosed in glass. You could see inside the diner. Uh, it had the those stools with the... Uh, the swivel stools where you could sit on there and there was like a, a U horseshoe shaped uh, bar area where you would get your hamburgers and french fries and whatnot your malts your milkshakes I just remember my grandma taking me over there or even my mom um, but uh, that's the first thing I remember about walking in there the memory is the hamburgers cooking on the flat top grill uh, it smelt like french fries all the time, and then they'd bring, bring you the tall glass of a, a frosty milkshake or something to your table. And my Aunt LaVon worked at this uh, diner for a while. Um, it seems to me they may have worn roller skates, but I might be thinking of Sonics or A&W, someplace like that. Um, but my aunt worked here, and I just remember my grandma always taking me down there to uh, enjoy some french fries, or she'd buy me a banana split or something. And she also took me to Woolworths a lot, and a uh, drugstore that was on the corner. She was always taking me for treats, and that's some of the fun stuff I remember us doing. Yes, Morty. <laughs> um... And along those lines, uh, there was also a drive-in movie theater back in those days. Do you guys remember drive-in movie theaters? Um, we used to have one in Topeka, and it was called the Chief Drive-In Theater. Um, this is all that's left of it. Uh, the the drive-in movie theater is gone, and now there's a Walmart where the uh, drive-in movie theater used to be. But they saved the sign. So this sign is sitting in front of the Walmart. Uh, they restored it and it still has, ne they, re they restored the neon and whatnot. And it sits in front of the Walmart there. Um, <clears throat> that's another memory I have from 
way back in the day, uh, my uncle used to hide me in the back seat of the, uh, uh, we had a 68 uh, Pontiac, uh, he had a 68 Le Mans at one time and also a uh, 68 uh, Impala. That was my grandma's car. It was a four-door, big old boat. <laughs> but he would hide me in the back seat under some blankets and stuff. And that got me in for free at the drive-in movie theaters. And that's just some memories I had from back in the day. I wanted to share that before we get to the records here in a bit. Some nostalgia there. As you can tell, I like a lot of old stuff. Morty's, Morty's asleep, <laughs> trying to sleep while I'm jabbering and on here in this video. And we'll get right to some records here, like we usually do in these videos. Here's a, um, <coughs> it's called Brown Acid, The First Trip. Now, if you see these, oh, <coughs> excuse me, still trying to get rid of the cough. Now, if you see these out in your record store somewhere, I highly recommend you pick these up. They're called Brown Acid, The First Trip. It's a compilation record, or records, I should say. And I'm going to read the back of it. After Flower Power and before punk, heavy and hard rock bands dominated the American music scene. In towns across the country, garage bands that had grown up taking drugs, flashing peace signs, and listening to the Beatles had witnessed the atrocities of Vietnam and Altamont, gaining a new perspective and a darker, crunchier, more bombastic sound in their music. Bands like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Grand Funk Railroad, and Deep Purple were blasting out of muscle car windows, influencing a new generation of jaded musical amateurs. Some of those ambitious groups earnestly composed some pretty far out jams, playing hard and heavy just like the pros. <coughs> These bands were on par with their heroes, albeit with their much smaller budget and inferior gear. Um, so what this is is a compilation of um, some hard and heavy bands that were sort of similar. They tried to play like Led Zeppelin, uh, maybe sort of psychedelic like and this is the first one of those records and I highly recommend this these if you see them um, I have part one there here's the second trip these ones I haven't even opened yet because I haven't listened to them I'm still on that first one Oh, look at those. <gasps> oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't have the third trip. I'm going to have to look for that. But here's the fourth one. Um, so far, that from that first album, I'm pretty much thinking these are going to be some... They're all going to be fantastic like that first one. The fifth trip. I'm not sure how many of these are. There are, but I have four of them. A uh, bunch of dope smoking potheads probably in there uh, really smoking it up smoking up the dope and uh, getting it on in the back seat of the old uh, uh, Chevelle the six the 60 67 super sport Chevelle or whatever it might be <laughs> oh Morty woke up hmm. and Next, we have um, Steely Dan's Greatest Hits. I haven't listened to this yet. I don't think I'm a huge Steely Dan fan, but I wanted to check this out. It is a gatefold. I'm not sure what's on the inside. I didn't even look at it. And here we have uh, the Steely Dan uh, twins, or whatever they may be in there <laughs> I'm not sure if they're twins or not but um, that's those two dudes Steely Dan uh, here we have some bluegrass Bill Monroe 
and his bluegrass boys. Uh, it might seem weird, but I do like some bluegrass now and then. And some good dancing music when you're up late at night. Half sauced up by yourself and your cat. And you just want to dance around to some hillbilly type music from back in the day, y'all. And here we have free fire and water. No idea what this is. I just picked it up because they sure look free. Uh, I might have heard these guys before, but I'm not sure. Bunch of darn hippies on here, y'all. Uh, here we have the Beatles rock and roll music. Oh, oh, I took it off. Here's the Beatles rock and roll music. Now, I already had this record. <coughs> and... The, my version of it's very played out. It's all poply and crackly, uh, starting to skip in places. So I picked up another copy of this. Now my original copy of this was my uncle's, um, and we won. He won his version of this off of a radio station back in the. Uh, I'm gonna say the mid to late seventies sometime when we used to listen to the radio all the time and we had a phone and you could call in they said the 10th caller will win this record or whatever and he happened to win it and uh later on i ended up with the record and i played it so much that it got all worn out so i had to get another one here the beatles rock and roll music and it's just basically a greatest hits of a lot of their early stuff like Twist and Shout, saw her standing there, the early stuff. You probably can't see it on this silver chromish type cover. And here we hit yes. I don't know why I got this. Meet the Brady Bunch. Probably just because David Cassidy just passed away here recently, didn't he? Um, and I wanted to hear, uh, Baby, I'ma want you. Baby, I'ma want you. Baby, I'ma need you. Oh, uh, that song, uh, excuse my singing skills. I'm not very good at it. I know you're saying the Brady Bunch. What are you doing? Showing the Brady. There's the <coughs> David Cassidy. No, wait. David Cassidy's the Partridge family. Damn it. I got my families mixed up. But David Cassidy probably did all of these people in the Brady Bunch too. Because you know David Cassidy kind of got around. He screwed everybody on the uh, Partridge Family television show. And here we have the Brady Bunch. And I don't know why I said David Cassidy. Um, maybe Barry Williams did all of these people. I don't have no clue. And that's not going anywhere. So we're moving on people. We're moving on. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, not lastly, but uh, we, I, I bought my girlfriend a new typewriter today. Connie, I hope you, it's not new, it's a vintage. She's really enjoying it. I bought her a, a Smith Corona typewriter we found downtown. Uh, I believe it's uh, somewhere in the 1950s, a Smith Corona Sterling. And she, we also got this... Uh, I picked up this red phone because I want to talk to Batman. No, uh, this is a 70s phone. I've always liked these. Um, I'm going to put it, you'll, maybe you'll see it back here in the later videos at some point. I'm going to hang it on the wall. Um, you remember these old phones like from the 70s. I want to get a different cord than that. Look at that thing. I want to get one of those curly like red ones instead of this. But for now, that's what's on there. You know, you, you could really work out. This is like the uh, 70s workout mechanism. You know, you're like, ooh, 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 oh, ooh. I'm really working it here, people. Ooh, getting my snooky on, Doug. Hey, <laughs> anyway, uh, I got this 70s phone. And there's a gadget you can get for this now where uh, you can hook it up to your laptop. And when you're making video calls to somebody, 
you can still use these and you'll be talking on your phone you'll be like oh bells at you oh bells at you could you bring me some Beatles records on your way home dear could you bring me some Beatles records on your way home and some tea and crumpets I need my tea and crumpets and also a large box of condiments. No, dear, not condoms. <laughs> I don't need condoms, a large box of condoms. I said condiments, like ketchup, ketchup and mustard, y'all. Yo, Belvedere, Belvedere. Bring me my horse and feather and some Beatles records and a large box of condoms, you dirty bastard. That sort of stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, that's going to turn out to be another long one, people. Because lastly, I have the million dollar record right here. Der German polkas. I think this is worth about a million bucks. Uh, and I also got my uh, German polka hat going here uh, for Connie over there. See, we're, we're going to do the polkas together and stuff. And um, let's get down with some polkas, people. And I am going to be very surprised if this gets a... Uh, if this gets a... Uh, copyright infringement people the, the the polka infringement people might bust me 